this liberation, he becomes free from material contamination and engages as a servant of the Lord. This is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. Mukti Ban Tamarupa Swarupe Devasmati. The word Swarupa refers to Sarupya Mukti, going back home, back to God, and remaining the Lord's eternal associate, having regained a spiritual body exactly resembling that of the Lord. With four hands, holding the Shanta, Chakra, Gada, and Padma. The difference between the Mukti of the Impersonalist and that of the devotee is that the devotee is immediately appointed an eternal servant of the Lord. And that the Impersonalist, although merging in the effulgence of the Ramajogi, is still insecure and therefore generally falls again to this material world. Aruya Krishna, Param Param Tata, Patantya Donad, Krishna. Although the impersonalist tries, although the impersonalist rises to the Brahman effulgence and enters into that effulgence, he has no engagement in the service of the Lord, and therefore he is again attracted to materialistic philanthropic activities. Thus he comes down to open hospitals and educational institutions, feed poor men, and perform similar materialistic activities, which the impersonalist thinks are more precious than serving the supreme personality. Anadita Vishma Angrea. The impersonalists do not think that the service of the Lord is more valuable than serving the poor man or starting a school or a hospital. Although they say, Brahma Satya Jagandit Ja, Brahman is real and the material world is false, they are nonetheless very eager to serve the false material world and neglect the service of the lotus feet of the Supreme Person.
understand this chapter and to go over the history of King Jaguna and Uhu the Gandharva, you really have to be serious about going back to God. Otherwise, you may well become bewildered. Uh, this chapter and the preceding chapter bring out our attachments to material existence. And therefore, we have perplexity, such as we discussed Monday. After last Monday, the devotees were asking me, but what came to do now? He was a devotee, he was in meditation on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and just because he didn't recognize due to his samadhi, his bhakti samadhi, he didn't recognize the presence of Augusta Muni, he was cursed to be an elephant. All right, eventually he was liberated by the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, but so what? I mean, why do we, where's the justice? Where's the fair play? I mean, what could be happening to us? We're concentrating on our job and <laughs> some of us may soul walks by and we don't offer obeisances and <laughs> what kind of fate is in store for us? So, this history makes you think about the material world. And indeed, Krishna does want you to think about the material world and how, basically, <laughs> it's a ripple. <laughs> <laughs> so, Krishna shows you very dramatically that on the material platform, there is no justice, there is no fairness, in that you cannot control how your happiness and distress comes to you. You simply interact with material nature, and material nature drags you its own way. And then you're crying out, I want fair play, I want justice. But as soon as you jump into material nature, you're under the control of material nature. Yes, material nature has its own system, but we don't know that system, and we can't see it. And therefore we keep trying to impose our own personal blend of what is justice, what is fair play. Because we're attached to our plans and our program, it's hard for us to understand what is truly going on in life. It seems like he introduced them, who became the gender, had a raw deal. But once you understand that the purpose of uh, life is to go back to Godhead, then you see the mercy. As we were explaining Monday, evidently, uh, it would take a few births in order to go back to Godhead. But the Lord accelerated the process of Indra by taking advantage of the curse by the best And remember that Gajendra King Kuduna, as an elephant, remembered his devotional service. And therefore, when he was caught in the mouth of the crocodile, he began to call out to the Supreme Personality of God. Mantras that he recited in his previous life came to mind. And so, the Supreme Personality of God personally came and pulled him from behind, pulled him out of the grip of the crocodile, pulled him out of his entrapment. And now you hear he's going back to Godhead on the back of Garuda with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So you say, that's wonderful, but still, this time he spent as an elephant is just not fair. Is this the way it's going to be for us? Now, why are we thinking that? Because we're focusing on the material body. We're focusing on the material situations. And that is our plague. We hear in the purport that a devotee must simply engage in devotional service, not caring about material situations. So what do you think about that? Sounds a bit old school, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like the 70s, uh, the 80s, this 
Gajendra, and Shikruta Mountain, you know, <laughs> the heavenly planets, mountains he's charging through with his herd of elephants, enjoying the river at the demigod's heavenly planet's vacation spot. We shouldn't uh, overlook the essential message. And of course, the circumstances are also instructive. The circumstances, although you don't see them today with your ordinary perception, the circumstances let you know that there's so much going on even in the material universe that you don't understand. But to speak of the spiritual world, the Shastra is telling us that Gajendra re received mercy of the Supreme Lord because he got to go back to Godhead quickly. And you don't know how long, how many births you would have had to wait. What to speak of? Who, the Gandharva, who was simply enjoying the heavenly planets? Srila uh, Prabhupada says millions of births who would have had to wait to get a chance to go back to Godhead. Now it's all accelerated. But again, we say, okay, it's accelerated, but still, to be a crocodile, even for a few years, to be an elephant, even for a few years, that's not fair. But we say that because we're attached to the material world. We want the material world to be a nice place, and then we consider everything to be fair. Bhakti should make the material world a nice place, right? That's that's a good Krishna who makes the material a nice place for us. All our material plans should work out. And then we think we'll feel encouraged in devotional service. But what about Chitra Ketu? Consider his situation. He was talking to Lord Sankarshan. He had the darshan that Lord Sankarshan was talking to. And he received from Lord Sankarshan himself, an unfolded space track for traveling all over the universe. He didn't make it, he didn't buy it. <laughs> it's the gift of Lord Sankarshan himself. So, Chitraketu is traveling all over the universe, and he's in the association of the most beautiful women from the Vijayara planet. And in their association, they're having tear talk, these chanting the Lord is the Lord. So, you like that? <laughs> that is Bhakti. <laughs> if Krishna does that to him, what about us? Yeah, that's what we want. <laughs> Travel around to all the vacation spots in the universe in a beautiful uh, airplane, surrounded by beautiful women. <laughs> and, of course, you're seeing Krishna's glories. There it is, the whole package.
making those statements, he was thinking of Lord Shiva's welfare. I understand that you're a transcendental, but what will the ordinary person think who hears about what you're doing or sees what you're doing? So Chittagate, he did have Lord Shiva's interests at heart, and Lord Shiva knew that. But Parvati was thinking, this is not talking to talk or explain, Parvati was thinking, okay, you said something once, you said something twice, three times, you said this too many times. <laughs> I got to take action. In other words, Chitra Kedra had really crossed the line in his constructive statements. And so, Parvati cursed him. You'll take birth in the Maniac family. Now, what was Chitra Kedra's personal situation? Very interesting. He actually had no karma. The stage of karma free is right before the stage of Krema. So Chichiketu was kind of evidently hovering in between this stage of free from karma and uh, entering full blown Krishna Krema. So therefore, the Acharyas explained that. The Supreme Personality of God was thinking, I miss Chichiketu. I want him back by my side. I miss his association in the spiritual world. So you might say, well, it's nice that Lord Sakrishan misses him, but what about uh, that curse of becoming a demon? <laughs> What's that got to do with anything? If you miss someone, you miss someone, but you don't put them through these ordeals. But also, the Supreme Personality of God had wanted to just tinker with Chitra Kedu's situation a bit. But you know, it's actually not the best thing that you're riding around with these women in the heavenly spacecraft. <laughs> I, I did give you the spacecraft, and yes, uh, it's all bona fide, but nevertheless, for going back to God, that is so not the best thing. Just a minor detail. You see, it's not, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Just, just a great person, you've got to do a little fine tuning. <laughs> I want you back, back home. Uh, so here we have Chitra Kate to worry about Lord Shiva. How are people going to understand what Lord Shiva's doing? What kind of example is this for the common person? I understand, but the common person will never understand. And simply, the Supreme Personality of God is thinking, uh, this is your cake to riding around in the spacecraft that I gave him, surrounded by the most beautiful women. They're making kirtan, they're glorifying me, and at the same time, uh, <laughs> a little fine tuning is required here. Actually, Chitra Kate was flying around like that for millions of years. <laughs> so finally, it got to the point, evidently, where the Supreme Personality of God decided. Number one, the main thing is I missed his association. And number two, uh, this doesn't look quite right for longevity. So then he said, for all this, you can do, it's cursed. But you see, for someone who's on the platform of Brahma, actually curses have no effect. And that's what Shiva pointed out to his wife. Your curses actually had no effect. Chitra Ketu just, upon being cursed, descended from his celestial space bag and offered obeisance to the Parvati. She had called him son. In other words, as Mother Durga, Durga Ma, she was in charge of material nature and she felt he had done something wrong, so she was punishing her child. Material nature can be very severe. And Chitra Ketu approached her and said, My dear mother, <laughs> I don't mind that you cursed me. He didn't ask her to retrieve the curse, to bring, to cancel the curse. He just, this happiness and distress thing, what is it? It's all external. You see, because where Chitra Ketu was situated was far beyond. Happiness and distress. 
So he's showing the characteristics of someone who has love of God. What are these material circumstances? These circumstances are not the real point. They're so insignificant, so external. So therefore, what she had to point out, to part of you that, I know you're very beautiful. In fact, he said, he addressed her, oh, my wife with beautiful hips. Lord Shiva is Lord Shiva. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful in that way, but he, to the king, has exceeded your beauty. Just look at the characteristics of someone who is a full Vaishnava. Just see the characteristics. How he is beyond curses, beyond happiness and distress. So, Chitraketu willingly accepted his situation. And as a demon, Vitrasura, you know, he demonstrated Vaishnava qualities to such an extent that Indra was astonished. And finally, in the battle between Indra and Vitrasura, Vitrasura tells Indra, come on and kill me. It's, I know it's preordained that he'll kill me. So come on and do it. <laughs> You'll kill me and be able to enjoy the material world. And I go back to God then. Let's, let's go. Let's get it on. I'm ready. <laughs> Indra was totally baffled. <laughs> Indra understood that this person is far superior to me, although he's in the body of a demon. <laughs> so Krishna has his ways of teaching us lessons, individually and collectively. You look at the situation of the disappearance of the Yama dynasty, Moshe Lila. Krishna's entourage, the Yamas, they leave the world in such an apparently horrible way. A drunken brawl, they all wipe each other out. Why? Why? Why does Krishna do things in this way? Shilavakti Sadat decides to God's word. Here's one reason. That Krishna wants to show you that this is how bad the material world is. Even my own personal entourage leaves in such a dramatic way. Shilavakti Sadat decides to God's explains that by having the Yamu dynasty leave in such a dramatic, catastrophic, apparently catastrophic way, Krishna is reducing the prestige of the material world. <laughs> and you'll start thinking, well, that's what happens to the Yamus in this world. What's about me? I gotta get out of here. That's <laughs> the effect that Krishna wants. It's all drama. <laughs> because actually you're not the body, you see? You're spirit soul. Actually, there's no suffering for you, but we're dreaming it. So Krishna arranges all these dramas, these dreamy dramas, <laughs> to accomplish his purposes, because actually you're not a resident of the material world. You lose sight of that point, and Bhagavatam starts to not make sense. And you start even making criticisms. Like sometimes persons, when they hear about how Sita was treated, they criticize wrong. If we can't understand these histories in the earlier cantos, what are you going to do when you get to the tenth canto? When Krishna tells the gopis that I left you for your own benefit. I couldn't repay your devotional service in the lifetime of Brahma. So, I left you. But don't think that I was far away. I was watching your agony of separation. I can't repay you for all your service. So I left you. How do you understand that? From the material point of view, it sounds like a disaster. You wouldn't want anyone to treat you like that. You wouldn't want someone to tell you as a reward for your decades of service. I left. <laughs> what husband or wife could handle that? But that's what Krishna told the topmost devotees in all existence. I can't repay you, therefore I left you. And be satisfied with your own service. Be satisfied with your own devotional service. <laughs> you see, at the topmost level of existence, still that point is there. Be satisfied with your devotional service. You 
You want to think about we talk about Gopi Baba? Well, there it is. Be satisfied with your service. <laughs> we never get above that point. We never rise above it. So again, we go back to this purport where Prophet said, a devotee must simply engage in devotional service, not caring about material situations. So how to apply this point? We don't want to be uh, immature, we don't want to be fanatical. Bhakti requires guidance. We've explained so many times. The real wealth of bhakti is guidance. And then you can get to the treasury of pure love of Krishna. Without guidance, uh, life in this world gets too difficult. And therefore when we hear about Indraguna, when we hear about Chitra Ketu, we, due to our material attachments, it's hard for us to understand. And we get a little afraid of Krishna. But if we remember the goal of life is to go back to God, then, just like the Gandharvas, the Siddhas, and other demigods, will praise the Supreme Personality God for his karma adbuta, his wonderful transcendental activities. These residents of the heavenly planets witnessing the gender going back to Godhead, they had no doubts. Uh, and therefore they were praising the Supreme Lord. Well, you have done an exceedingly wonderful thing. You've accelerated King of Dunas going back to Godhead. You've accelerated his regaining his spiritual body. And that is what this purport is saying. Having regained a spiritual body exactly resembling that of the Lord. Plain English. <laughs> By daily hearing these histories, we slacken our grip on material nature. That's very important. Bhagavatam has a mystical effect. By regularly hearing Bhagavatam bless, your grip on material nature starts to slacken. You let go. And then you can actually understand the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Narasa Dasta, of course, is Bhagavata Taishanya, Kavana Bhavita, Samsara Vashnamora, Kavana Tucha. When will I get the mercy of Lord Yashananda? Which will make all my material desires insignificant. Then I can understand what is Vrindavan. Otherwise, our material conceptions. We'll just be bewildered by the, what we think of material circumstances. We'll apply material values. How do you going to understand uh, all the ordeals that the bridge bosses went through? Because Krishna wanted to increase their love. <laughs> Forest fires. <laughs> so many incidents like that. All because Krishna wanted to increase their anger. You would say with your material conceptions. What kind of love is that? <laughs> but in the topmost portion of the spiritual world, love is everything. Everything that happens in the Dhamma simply increases the pure love of Krishna. So we want to become qualified for that supreme destination. So therefore we have to reduce our material conceptions. And our prime material conception is, I want a nice time in this world. I want a nice place in this world. Even though my life is going to be so short, it doesn't matter. I want a good time. I want good facilities. That doesn't mean we should go to an extreme and go out of our way to make our life as miserable as possible. <laughs> no, we're thinking devotional service. What do I need in order to serve Krishna? Let me keep myself in shape, in as good as health as I can. Let me uh, have the facilities I need in order to serve Krishna in all material circumstances. Whatever facilities Krishna gives as Krishna's mercy for engaging in devotional service, not for having a nice time in the material world, is a difference. So these are some lessons that we can imbibe from these sometimes perplexing histories about Chitra Ketu, about King Hu, about King Indra 
The whole point is how to go home back to that. And remember, Krishna is missing his devotees. He was missing to the gate of association. So underneath it all is the supreme inconceivable love that the supreme personality of God has for his devotees. Come back as soon as possible. Any questions? <coughs> yes. Um, uh, during the, the class of well reading and engaging, engaging directly in the military service, 